Hey boys and girls, so welcome back to our craft time today. We are going to be talking some more about scarecrows. We had so much fun looking at the scarecrows at Huffnagle Park at Lewisburg that we thought maybe we should make some scarecrows of our own. And you can put these in your home, you can put them outside if you want. Um, I don't think they'll last real long outside, but you're certainly welcome to try. Maybe hang them on your front door where they'll be protected from the elements. Um, to help everybody enjoy your scarecrows as much as we enjoyed ours. And of course, um, it has to do with our book, The Scarecrow, that we read, which was by um, Beth Ferry. And we're going to make a scarecrow to go along with it. And if we make a scarecrow, we also need a crow to go along with it. Go, go! So we're going to make one of those too. And they're not that hard to make. If you are able to stop by the Her Memorial Library in Mifflinburg, we have these kits set up so that you can make both the scarecrow and the crow. Um, and we have coloring and activity pages to go along with both as well. If you can't make it by the library and pick up those kits, you can still make the craft with things that you find at home. So let's go ahead and get started. I thought we would make our crow first. That way we can have something for the scarecrow to frighten away, right? To make the crow, in your packet that you get from the library, and if you don't have a packet, these are what you'll need um, to find at home. First thing you're going to have to do is get a large black circle. And um, from that black circle, you want to cut out just over, you know, we cut out a quarter and then just a little bit more. It's not an exact measurement because we're going to form this into a cone shape. So it's kind of like a, a three-fourths kind of a circle. Um, and then you're going to need a black rectangular square. You're going to need a smaller black circle. Then you're going to need two strips of yellow paper for the legs. And these are about one inch by about eight inch is long. Then you're going to need um, these little feet that we cut out. These come in the kit that we provided. If you don't have the kit, just take some uh, about two inches by two inches square of construction paper and cut out um, kind of like a big wide W shape or maybe an M shape if you want to look at it that way. It's just like the three toes on the foot. Millie, make yourself comfortable. You're also going to get some, you're going to have to make a beak. And we made ours out of decorative paper, scrapbook paper scraps that we had left over. And this is kind of like a rounded triangle. And don't make the point too, too pointy, but um, that, that's the tip of the beak. And again, in our kits from the library, you get one of those. And then you're also going to need wings. So you're going to need um, two black rectangles that you can cut out these wing shapes. Again, if you kind of imagine it to be like a W or an M shape, just like we did with the feet, only on a much larger scale. And you can just kind of trace those out and then these will be your wings. And so that's what you need to make up the body of the bird. And then you're also going to need some googly eyes and then these brass brads to attach the wings to the bird. And this way, you can make him move his wings up and down as he's flying. Okay, so let's, Millie, do you want to make one too? Yes, I know you love craft time, but you can't eat this, sorry. Okay, so the first step you need to make, and you're gonna need, sorry, you're gonna need tape, you're gonna need glue, and you're going to need um, scissors if you need to cut things out. So the first step we're gonna do is take your circle shape and you want to wrap it into a cone. And that just means that you kind of want to um, bring them around, the edges around, until it forms a point at the top, like that. And then take your tape. I'm always losing my tape. Wrapping Christmas presents is fun at my house. I go through about 50 things of tape trying to find the tape I just had. And then you just want to tape it right along the seam there, just like that. And then just for added stability, I take another piece of tape, try not to let it stick to itself, and you want to tape it on the inside. That'll give your cone that stable shape. And see, it looks like an upside down ice cream cone or a mountain. The next step we're going to do is to make the head. So you need your circle, your small circle, and you're going to need your glue. And you want to make sure you don't dry glue on top. You want to take your beak and put just a little bit of glue on the on the bottom of the rounded part of your beak and put that at the bottom of the circle. You kind of want it to overlap the bottom of the circle. Millie, why are you crying? It's craft time. 
And so it kind of hangs off like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our eyes on, just like this too. I don't recommend a glue stick for this part of the craft um, because your googly eyes, they stick better with regular glue than they do with glue stick. And so that almost looks like you're done with your bird. Millie, you're being so naughty today. Come here, Millie girl. Come here, you can't bother Mr. Chris when he's filming. Okay, so that next step we have to do is to make this cute little feather on top of your bird's head. I would recommend um, that you take your black square and with a white pencil, you want to trace out a feather shape. Now, we have one that we've pre-made to give you an idea of what it should look like. And once you get it cut out, you just wanna cut like little jagged edges here and then a curved edge on the side, but it can look any way you want. And when you get that cut out, you wanna put just a little bit of glue here at the base of it and then tuck it under your bird's head. That way it pops up from underneath. And there we have our bird's head. I'll see if I can show you a little bit better. This table that we're using today is dark, so we'll put on this pink shirt so you can kind of see that better, how it pops up. All right, so we're gonna let this off to one side to dry. Now, the next step that you're gonna do is going to be the accordion legs. So take your yellow strips of paper and you just want to accordion fold these back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. As you can tell, I'm doing it not quite an inch wide. You can make them as small or as wide as you like. This is really good for those little preschool fingers to be doing. Um, it's good eye-hand coordination and helps them develop that essential skill. It's okay if you have a little bit left over because that's what we're going to glue to the body. And you want to just do it like that. And then we'll go ahead and do this one as well. And we're just going to pause the video a second here while I quick do this. Okay, so we're back. We have the, the paper legs all accordion folded. So the next step is to glue our feet onto our legs. So again, you don't need a lot of glue, but I would recommend you fold them on um, the, the side here that is flat and folded up so that we can put our feet right on top, like so. And you can put them up a little bit so they pop out a little bit of the leg. And we're just gonna let that dry and then a little bit here again. And we're gonna let that one dry, just like so. So we'll set them off to one side like we did our head. Now we're gonna go back to the body, to the cone here. We're gonna attach our wings to the side of the bird. So here's what you're gonna need these brass brads for. And sometimes they puncture through really easy and just like that one did. But sometimes they don't. So this might be a, a mom or dad or a caregiver project where they can use a piece of scissors to puncture through the paper and get that attached. You don't want to do it where the seam is at, so you want to make that the back of the bird. So you want to move on the side from that and you want to make sure that the wings are pointing towards, like on ours here, we have our, our wings are, are pointing towards the front. The feathers are pointing towards the front. So I'm going to try to do this backwards here. So on this side, we put them about here. You want to go about halfway up and just pop it through, just like that. And then if you can see inside where it popped through, now we're gonna go ahead and secure this by bending the brass brads back. I gotta watch what I was doing, sorry guys. And now you can see how it's secured on the inside. Now the other one we're gonna do just like we did that one. We want it to face the front. Now, if you want to put your wings on the other way, by all means do so. It's your crow. Make it your original crow. So again, we're going to go right on the opposite side and we're going to puncture it through. And just like before, we're going to secure it on the inside. And now our bird has wings and he can fly. So now you're almost done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and secure the legs to our body. 
just like so. A little bit of glue on there. We want to center them under the wings here. And you just want to glue him underneath. Maybe count to 10 while you're holding him in place. And this one too. We're just going to count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there's his legs. And last but not least, we're going to glue on his head. And for this one, we want to put him right towards the top. So you want to put a little bit of glue towards the bottom of the circle here. You can kind of be generous with the glue here because we want him to stick really well. And we're going to push him on here. And we're going to count to ten again. Maybe we should do it in Spanish this time. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Yay! And look, there he sits. Isn't he cute? I don't know why anybody would want to scare such a cute bird away, but there you have it. So there's your cute little crow. But we do need to build a scarecrow to go with him. So we're going to go ahead and work on that today. Next, again at the library, we had these kits pre-made. Each kit comes with a brown paper bag. It also comes with a brown hat, an orange nose, two pink cheeks, and some scrapbook paper for the brim of the hat. Everything else we need you to provide to make this craft, you're going to need yellow paint and a paint brush. I like the foam brushes for this craft, but you can use regular brushes. And you'll need a black marker, and you're going to need scissors, and of course, glue. And you're going to need a stapler. So let's go ahead and get started on this one. The first thing you want to do with your paper bag is paint it. We have to paint the top part of the bag and this is the hardest part of the craft. You need a lot of patience to do this. It takes some time, but you just want to put some paint on there and then you just want to start painting away. Painting away. And you want to paint up to about a line here. My paintbrush is falling apart. You want to paint up to a line here. You don't want to go too far down. Um, about a third of the way is sufficient and as you can see it's going to take an awful lot of paint to make this a bright yellow color. So what you're going to be doing is repeating this step over and over. I think I did um, three coats of paint on mine to get it nice and bright. So you have to let it dry and then come back and do it again. And that's how we do that one. As you can see I didn't go all the way down. It's a little farther than a third, but that's okay. We'll make that short. He'll be a little bit of a shorter scarecrow. When that's all done and dry and you've got it as, as yellow as you want it, you have to flip the bag over and do it all over again on this side. Let me show you an example of one that we did. So here's one that we painted and then we turned it over and painted it on this side. And as you can see, they're all dry. Now I will tell you that when you paint these bags, they get stiff and sometimes they stick to each other. So be real careful and gentle when you're separating them that you don't tear the bag yet. We're going to get to that. So once you've decided how you want to do it, here's one where we let it dry and then we have to paint the other side. So it takes some time. That step takes the longest and you'll need patience. So once you have it all done and painted and dry, the next step you have to do is to figure out where you want to put your face. Do you want to use this side of the bag or are you going to use this side of the bag? It doesn't matter because we're going to be opening the bag up. So you'll have equal space. So maybe your bag like this one has got um, a folding flaw in it that you don't want. You could do this side. Or maybe you like that folding flaw because it gives your scarecrow personality. So you can use whichever side you like. And the first step that you want to do though is you need to draw some eyes which I just are going to make with little U's here. And we're going to put some eyelashes on them like so. And then we're going to make our smiley face and you can make any kind of smile that you like. We kind of did a um, funny little U shape motion like this. And then we just put some stitches in because scarecrows are usually made out of leftover fabric. And you would put um, little stitches in to keep your smiles and your embellishments in place. Next, we're going to go ahead and glue on our nose, which of course goes right in the middle. And if you want to use a glue stick for these, you can. Um, these will stick pretty good with either regular glue or a glue stick. And then glue your cheeks on just like so. Isn't he cute? Then 
we're going to go ahead and take our scissors and we're gonna cut him up here because this is what makes his hair. You wanna cut all the way down to that line that you painted. And you can make his hair as thick or as thin as you like. Maybe you want him to have big wide locks or maybe you want him to have smaller locks. Make sure kids that you're using safety scissors. We don't want anybody to cut their fingers and you wanna cut through both sides of the bag. So make sure you're getting both sides. It might be kind of hard for young kids. So this might also be a good caregiver assisted craft. Okay, so once you have them all cut, now we have to open up our bag. Just like that. Looks pretty funky, doesn't he? And you're going to want to take some extra paper you have, scrap paper, leftover paper, tissue paper, whatever paper you have in mind, and you want to put it inside your, your scarecrow to give him some filling. And then once you've got your bag or your um, paper stuffed inside of it, we're going to seal them up and we're going to staple them shut. That's what you need safer for. And before you do that, make sure you fold his hair over. So if you use wider cuts, sometimes that's easier, but the smaller cuts are kind of cute too. And you might need to give your scarecrow a trim if you can't see his eyes, that's okay. And you just want to staple it, just like you would a lunch bag. And here we go. And like so, and one more in the middle for the bag. Okay, so let me take a look at my hair here. He's kind of covering our eyes a bit, isn't he? So maybe we'll give him a little bit of a trim here. We want to be able to see our scarecrow. So we're going to cut his bangs a little bit. And we'll kind of come in at an angle and cut him kind of goofy and silly because he's a scarecrow. And we'll cut some of these here. We don't mind a bad haircut, do we? Kids, don't cut your own hair at home. That'll make your parents upset. And then you can fold some of the hair back too. Get him out of his eyes. And give him kind of a funky little look here. Nothing like playing cosmetologist with your scarecrow. And then once you get him how you want him, all funky even colored. Now we're gonna put the hat on him. And on the hat, you want to take your scrap paper brim and we're going to put glue on that. And we're going to glue that on here like so. And then again, we're going to fold over the top because nobody puts new clothes on a scarecrow. So we want this hat to look a little battered and worn. So we're going to fold over the top. And again, we're going to put some hash marks on here to make it look kind of worn. And maybe some lines here too, just to show that it's kind of beat up. And then last but not least, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna run some glue right along the edge here, like so. And we're gonna glue our hat on top of our scarecrow, just like that. Make sure you press it down and hold it again. If you count to 10, that's usually a good average to make sure that everything sticks. He's really cute, isn't he? Just the head. If you want to stop there with your scarecrow at this point, you can. He's a nice tabletop decoration. Maybe for Thanksgiving, you want to use them for placeholders for the tables, and you can write your family member's name on here. You can write mom or dad or grandma and make them cute little placeholders. If you want to be really creative, you can even put treats inside, and it can be a take-home grab bag for kids at Thanksgiving. But if you want to make a full-fledged scare, full scarecrow like what we did, the next step that you're going to have to do is you need to get some paint sticks. And we're going to go ahead and undress my scarecrow here a minute so you can kind of see how we did this. We just got, got some paint sticks and we hot glue gunned them onto each other like so. And I put a little hole in the bottom of our paper bag to put it on the top like so, so it sits on top. And then I found some old doll clothes that I didn't even remember I had from when I was a little girl. And we just put those doll clothes on like so and we rubber band it to the stick so they would stick. 
in order to make it. Oh, I just dropped his head off. See, he's not very secure. But none scarecrows are. They are pretty, pretty loose. Okay, so we're gonna put them back together like so. And there he is, isn't he cute? And then I just found a glass, a small juice glass, that I could wrap his jeans legs around, like a vase. And I can put the stick inside there and wrap him around so he can stand up on his own. So he could be your own centerpiece on your table, just like so. If you wanna make him really authentic, we have wrap a ribbon that you can get at the store and you can cut pieces of that off and you can stick that inside of his arms or outside of his legs um, or, or maybe coming out of his neck area to make it look more like a real scarecrow. And that could be your cute scarecrow. You can also use scrapbook paper of your choice to create clothing. You can make um, paper shirts and paper pants and you can glue them or even use double-sided sticky tape um, to make like a paper doll clothing items for him and you could change his clothes just like you change yours every day. And you can hang him on the wall and he could be your wall decoration for the fall. So there's lots of ways you can use our scarecrow and even our cute little crow to go along with. So we hope you enjoyed our crafts today and we hope you enjoyed our book and our time out at Huffnagel Park. And we hope you come on down to her Memorial Library and see us. And we're open for browsing now so you can wander through the stacks and get lost in a world of imagination and pick up some fun crafts to do while you're there. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.